we may be talking about preseason, but don't tell any of these Steelers fans that here in Accra Shore Stadium. It was an unbelievable game. We got our very first look at Kenny Pickett. He scored on his first drive, and then he scored on his last drive. His Pitt teammates were in the, in the stands going crazy. His current teammates were going just as crazy. An unbelievable moment a special moment he will never forget. The final score, Max Starks, 32 to 25, your Pittsburgh Steelers. I, I'm still finding it hard to believe that this was a preseason game. Yeah, no, it was completely electric in the stadium. And of course, when you hear that Kenny Pickett's gonna come in and start the second half, the roar in the stadium was crazy. His teammates were going wild. And then you methodically worked down the field and you ended in a Jalen Warren touchdown pass. It was everything you could have hoped for and written for a guy who's the native son here. The last time you were on this field, you won an ACC championship. And now in your first debut, you go and you get the game winner for the hometown team. And listen, you don't want to overhype, right, a, a draft pick. You never want to do that. But you can appreciate how special this moment was. You and I were walking through the tunnel. There's the Pitt logo. There's the Steelers logo. The locker room, one side's on the left, the other team's on the right. And he lived up to those expectations for tonight. For tonight. Now, the next step's going to be can you do it when the competition steps up a little bit when you've got more guys that are hungry when you go down to Jacksonville we'll see how the quarterback rotation turns out but for right now hotly contested I said he was the highest riser of the three well now he's made a statement two touchdown passes in this game leading the Steelers back to victory on a game winning drive is going to make that quarterback decision a lot tougher he's definitely muddied the waters and made it a true three horse race. I don't think Mike Tomlin has any problem with those waters being muddied for that reason. Okay, now let's see what the fans at home had to say when we take a look at the social media posts brought to you by Pepsi. And of course, we asked, who were you most impressed by? Take a look at this. Andy Ruffalo saying, I said it on draft day, George Pickens was a steal, but Jalen Warren was impressive too. He has yeah. been popping through camp and he popped today as well. Well, and I said this during the radio broadcast, I said his nickname is going to be AFF always falling forward and you saw that tonight <laughs> he broke tackles don't let the 5'8 fool you he's still 215 pounds and he showed why he was a bowling ball and very tough to tackle in this contest and when you're thinking about one of the biggest I think contest is going to be for that second running back spot we saw Anthony McFarland he looked good in the starting role and then Jalen Warren came in and he did a tremendous job as well so those are probably your two front runners right now to back up Najee Harris Benny Snell not in action tonight so it was really cool. We are going to be talking about Jalen Warren and so many more players but first Missy Matthews has an interview for us take it away Missy. All right, I am here with Robert Spillane, and uh, we were just talking to Gunner outside. A pretty exciting game just from the start to the finish. What was it like to kind of be back in this atmosphere? You know, anytime you get to step out on, on a stage, on a field, and perform for the fans and for each other, you got to love those moments. And, uh, you know, I told the young guys especially, this first game for them, the rookies, you'll remember this the rest of your life. I still remember my first preseason game like it was yesterday so it goes fast and anytime you get to step in a stadium is a fun opportunity. What was it like for you this preseason game being in a totally different you know situation than the rookies and knowing that you've been doing really well at camp. Yeah I mean I look at it as I still got a lot of work to do. Um, I'm not there yet. Um, we're a develop, developing world championship football team and every day is a next step forward so I look forward to getting in uh, tomorrow, breaking down the film and going from there. I knew you were going to say something about the film, but just as we sit here tonight, what do you take away in terms of the defense collectively? I just love how we came together. We made a big play there at the end to secure victory. And, you know, a lot to clean up, uh, as it should be the first preseason game. But we got a, a group of guys who are willing to do whatever it takes to get things right. So we'll be going in the right direction. All right, Robert, thanks so much for your time. Thank you, Missy. Have a good one. All right. You too. All right, we'll send it back to you guys. Thanks, Missy. Thank you for the time, Robert Spillane, as well. Okay, coming up next, we're going to check in with Pomp and Batch, and they're going to give us all of their insights and takeaways from the very first preseason game for your 2022 Pittsburgh Steelers. We'll be back after this. Welcome back into Accra Shores Stadium. Max Starks, 
I'm Amanda Renner and Max. We were hoping for a dramatic game. I think everybody got ex everything they wanted and maybe a little bit more. Of course, the Steelers winning 32 to 25 over the Seattle Seahawks. Let's take a look at how they got it done. What numbers stick out to you here? Well, I think the first number is rushing yards. Mm. That's been one of the key points that Mr. Rooney set out. That was his way of saying, hey, this is what we're doing. We need to be a running team. I thought they accomplished that today. And then, of course, the third down conversion, 7 of 13, was one of those things coming in, keeping drives alive to keep that fast start. I felt that was probably the two biggest things I wanted to see in this game, and they got accomplished. Absolutely. That was our JP Roofing final stats. And then we are going to be bringing in Charlie Batch and Bob Pompiani, who were calling the game. I was actually up there with them, just learning from them in the booth, and it was so cool to see how excited they were calling it. So, guys, I'm going to bring you in. What sticks out to you if you can just pinpoint one thing? Oh, Amanda, there are many things. I mean, you guys talked about the quarterbacks. I think that goes without saying, and that competition now is really boiling. But I also thought there were big plays you know, in the run game. We talked a lot about Jalen Warren. He stepped up with his opportunity. And we thought about Master Teague. He did the same. The second team offensive line came to life. But two other guys impressed me. Steven Sims, 38-yard punt return. Little things that make a big difference. And then Mark Robinson with the blindside hit that forced uh, the turnover that won the game as it turned out. Oh yeah, when you talk about Sims and special teams, that's how you're going to have to make your impact on this roster. He did that in a big way. When you look back at Mark Robinson, this is a guy, quite frankly, nobody knew what to expect from him. He made a big play. That's the play that's going to show up on the highlights. So it gets everybody excited. Why? Because it changed the game. It went from a possibility of putting your defense on the field or not losing the game, and then all of a sudden giving your offense the ball back to go out there and win it. So I thoroughly impressed with everybody all around. As a quarterback, he was smiling all <laughs> night long. Let me tell you, I saw it up here. Now it's time for our Remax Selects game summary. Brought to you by Remax Select. All three quarterbacks touchdown passes. Pickett had two, including the game winner to Tyler Vaughns with time just about over. Uh, and of course, Mitch Trubisky had one. Gunnar Oshesky, and then you saw Mason Rudolph go to work with George Pickens, and what a toe tap he did. No turnovers offensively. That's something Mike Tomlin has been stressing, especially this year. And then young receivers, big plays, making them all over the place. It's going to make it difficult to uh, really, you know, add on after the top four. Who who is the fifth receiver? And Gunner could have a role in that. So Charlie, aside from that, uh, you know, I think defensively they're looking for individual guys who can add depth to this team. Mark Robinson, one of them. Who else stood out to you on the defensive side of the ball? Yeah, I think when you look back all around, I mean, it's really hard to just say one particular person. I think this is something, a collective effort. I have to go back and review the film. But, man, it's just a matter of making up and stepping up and making a play. And right now, it's going to be really interesting to see. I love the depth that Mike Tomlin has right now. And it's going to be really interesting to see how it all evolves over the next two weeks when you're playing these final two preseason games. Oh, everything will be. And you talk about having steak and lobster available. It's going to get even more <laughs> intense this week. Now it's time for Charlie Batch's Heinz quarterback analysis. Here you go, Charlie. Mike Tomlin always talks about starting fast. Mr. Trubisky, he was able to do that, connecting there with George Pickens. Here all of a sudden, here he is now working the middle of the field and then throwing a touchdown pass, working not nothing there initially, rolling to the left, finding an easy touchdown there in the corner. And so he started out well. He should feel really good about where he's at and where he started. Mason Rudolph, on the other hand, didn't start out well as he attempted his first pass. It was a sack, strip, uh, strike, sack, essentially. But two plays later, able to deliver a pass. There's a sack right there that you just see. And then able to deliver a pass right there to George Pickens in the back of the end zone right now. Beautiful play on that connection. Mason should feel really good about what he did tonight. And of course, all eyes were on Kenny Pickens. We're still looking at Mason Rudolph on one particular play. But he was able to step up in the middle of the field. He was able to deliver. He took some big shots. He was able to get up. Kenny Pickens, man, this is a guy everybody wanted to see. He was able to, to deliver the football, go through his reads, and of course, throwing a touchdown pass here. No. So really, I love what I saw. And when you look back and see where uh, Mike Sullivan is at as it relates to the quarterback position, he has some tough decisions to make. And it's going to be interesting to see how those reps unfold in training camp. Does Kenny earn more second team reps? Does Mason earn first team reps? I don't know if the pecking order changes at this point, but all I know is only two preseason games left, and you have 
to evaluate in his very tough decisions, and they're making the decision very, very tough for Mike Tomlin. More Kenny Pickett. You, you don't see that in preseason where this crowd went into a Kenny chant twice, especially after the fumble that was forced by Mark Robinson, recovered by Tuzar Skipper. And next thing you know, Kenny chants, and he responded with a game winning touchdown to Tyler Vons. All I can say is, Amanda, you came to town and you saw one of the best preseason games I think we've done in how many years we've been doing this. It was unbelievable, and you got to see it firsthand. I know Max was pumped. I can tell how he reacts, especially with offensive plays going well. I, I was watching the last couple minutes of the game with Max, and he was going out of his mind. I was a little nervous, actually. I have no clue what any of you are talking about. I am not an excitable person. I like to keep it calm and collected, you know, especially with my triplet crew there. You see, all of us got the memo to wear the black with the gray shirts. I mean, we're just uniform here. It's amazing. <laughs> Listen, if you're not excited after this game, you are doing it all wrong. We'll be right back after this at Shore Stadium, and we're going to listen in to some of the press conferences. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Extra Point, our post-game show after the Steelers defeated the Seattle Seahawks 32-25, and there is nobody better to ask about this game than the head coach himself a walking sound bike let's hear it from Mike Tomlin All right, coach. man first I just like to thank the fans man they were really into it and and we appreciate their presence uh, created the type of atmosphere that we desire here at Akashore and so um, that was good to get back in front of them um, a lot of good efforts some things to learn from some positive things some negative things um, that's probably the nature of the first week out it's good to learn those lessons and explore those things with the win. Um, I don't care what time of year it is, we play and play to win. And I appreciate the group's efforts, um, particularly a lot of the young guys. Uh, we held a lot of guys out. It created a, a awesome play opportunity um, for guys, not only in terms of playmaking and so forth, but just you know displaying conditioning and, and, and seeing uh, if they're capable of playing with detail as as you know fatigue and so forth sets in. Um, a lot of, you know, awesome efforts. Um, we'll comb through this. It's big. Uh, I just told the group, you know, the, bi the biggest thing that we've probably done to this point is the next time we come together and the analysis of this tape and the lessons learned and how that guides our actions as we, as we lean into the next in-stadium opportunity. And that's the cycle that is this game. And so um, it's a big week for us. Um, we were able to stay virtually injury-free. I think Carl Joseph had an ankle that's being evaluated. I don't know that any of the other ones are of any significance. You guys didn't see us work on Friday. Uh, so uh, Calvin Austin had a foot injury that didn't allow him to play. Uh, we'll evaluate him, and hopefully he'll get back to us sooner rather than later. But I don't have a lot of details in that regard. I'll pause and then open it up for questions. Mike, what did you make of uh, Kenny Pickett and what he was able to do there at the end? You know, um, he, he, he moved his group. Um, he played situational football. He, had a, he displayed a competitive spirit. Um, a lot of good things to build on for, from a first performance standpoint. What about the first two quarterbacks? I thought I could say the same thing. That was head coach Mike Tomlin. We'll be back with much more after this break. Once again, the Steelers walk away with their first win of 2022. It's still preseason, though. Steelers football is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, America's number one sportsbook. We are back here at Akershore Stadium after the Steelers took down the Seahawks 32 to 25. Missy Matthews doing a great job on our sidelines and with these post game interviews and she has someone else that we're going to hear from now. All right, thanks so much, guys. Uh, Tyler, take me through the end of that game and just the emotions that went with that. Um, we were just waiting for our little key little, key little downs. Um, we got the concepts that we wanted, and we just execute I mean, what Coach T talks about, winning on the sideline. What does that mean for you and just what you were able to put out there on film? I'm um, just trying to showcase my film, uh, my film, my skills, and how I can do anything on the field. 
Coach always talks about, you know, team effort. Offense did its part, defense did it par its part. What does that mean just in terms of, you know, taking that next step of building this team that you guys have been working so hard on in training camp? Everybody has their part and everybody has their certain skills and you master your skills and he wants to see them on Sundays or the Saturday today um, in, in your game. So once it all comes together, you can miss a master plan. Lastly for you, Coach, talk so much about the wide receivers room and how there's just so many different guys in terms of build, you know, things like that. What do you think uh, you bring to that room? Uh, I bring excitement. Um, I'm not the most talkative person, but um, I can light it up in the game anytime. All right. Thanks so much and congratulations. Right, I appreciate it. All right, guys, we'll send it back over to you. Thanks, Missy. That, of course, is Tyler Vons connecting with Kenny Pickett for the final touchdown of the day. We'll be back after this to wrap up our final thoughts from Akershore Stadium. Xfinity, unbeatable internet made to do everything so you can do anything. We're back here at Akershore Stadium. It's been an unbelievable first preseason game of 2022. Unlike anything Charlie Batch, Max Stark said they have ever seen, and they have seen a lot. 32 to 25 is that final score. And we're gonna take a look at some of those tweets from people who are just as impressed, I think, as the rest of us. Steelers unite. Michael Steelers saying Jalen Warren and George Pickens. For me, it's a toss up in terms of who was most impressive to him. Can you pick between the two, Max? I, I can't pick between the two. Both of them had a touchdown. That's right. That's usually the great differentiator, but here they had it. Ah, here we go. Myra Copes Yinzers saying all three of the QBs. Who impressed you out of the three? I think Kenny Pickett. Mm. I think he had the most to prove out here, the most pressure on him to come out into the stadium and perform, and he delivered better than UPS and FedEx could have done in that moment. <laughs> they delivered everything. Mitch Trubisky also having a strong showing for his first time yes. in black and gold. Ah, here we go. They, they agree with you, Max. Pickett, baby, listen. He's just going to be a hometown favorite. That's, oh. That is what it is, right? He, the man, the myth, and now creating a legend. I mean, that, that's what he's doing right now. He, yeah. he is the Pittsburgh son. So It's probably nice, though, we were talking about it during commercial break, to get those expectations off of your back when it's preseason, right? That's a lot of emotions. That's a lot of adrenaline that you probably don't want to deal with during the actual season. No, you just want to focus on being a quarterback trying to be the best teammate that you can be and get this offense going. So to have this environment, have a home preseason game in front of the crowd, get all of the butterflies out of your tummy and go out there and perform. And he did that. He exercised all those potential demons and made it into rainbows and unicorns. It's a lot of happy things right there. That is a lot, lot of happiness there. Uh, let's take a look at our Hyundai names to know. We talked about the tackles with you in the pregame. Now you had a chance to watch them for four quarters. Dan Moore Jr., Chooks Akora for and then we talked about those three. Who stood out to you? Well, I think one of the guys that really stood out for me, I thought Joe Haig. Mm -hmm. Joe Haig came in uh, early in the second quarter when Mason Rudolph was in, manned the right side when they removed center, right guard, and right tackle. Came in and manned that early. And then Trent Scott stepping in at left tackle after Dan Moore and Kendrick Green got through the whole entire first half. So I thought both of them did a really good job, really good showing, showed solid veteran leadership. Didn't see as much of the glue at tackle. Saw him a little bit more at guard first and then bumped out there late in the game. But I'll tell you what, Haig and Scott look really good to me. And it's going to be interesting to see how it looks in Jacksonville come next week. Kendra Green and Dan Moore Jr. getting a lot of time to work on that chemistry as well. And we'll, only time will tell if that is saying something for the future or not. Okay, let's take a look at this schedule moving forward. Next week, we get to be in Jacksonville, Florida. I lived in Jacksonville for five years. Oh. You went to school in Gainesville. Is, does this right. feel and like a home in game Jacksonville. too? I mean, Andy this is going there. to be a home game because this is one of the teams where they would have to black out the games at home mm -hmm. because there were too many Steeler fans. The mayor came in and put a decree in, <laughs> do not resell your tickets to Steeler fans <laughs> so that we can actually have Jaguar fans in the stadium. So I think that speaks a lot. This is the summer southern home of the Pittsburgh Steelers is in Duval County. I love that. And then, of course, the third and final preseason game will be back here at Akershore Stadium against Detroit. So let's wrap it up. Final yep. thoughts after game one. What are your biggest takeaways? Biggest takeaways is you look at what 
George Pickens was able to do, coming right out the gates with Mitch Trubisky and showing that rapport. Jalen Warren stepping up big and being a running back and dubbed always falling forward. That's going to be my name for him from here on out. And then, of course, what we saw from Kenny Pickett. So that's the offensive standouts for me. And then defensively, I thought the defensive line answered huge. Mark Robinson had a bad play, and then he made it up by having the play for the defense. And then, of course, Khalil Davis, another young guy coming in and playing big, and DeMarvin Leal. So I know these guys are going to go back to camp. There's a lot of work to be done between now and game two. But what are you hoping to see in terms of incremental improvements for week two of preseason? Well, I think I'm more so looking forward to being how fast they're going to be getting off to a start. And can they carry this out till the next game? This has been an incredibly exciting first week. Max, I'm so excited to do this with you again next week. I, I'm sure it's only going to get better from here, from all of us here at Accra Shore Stadium. For our entire Steelers production team, thank you for watching the Neighborhood Ford Store Steelers Extra Point. The Steelers head to Jacksonville. The Bet MGM Steelers kickoff begins at 6.30 p.m. next Saturday. Have a great rest of your night, and let, we'll see you in Duval. Duval. <laughs>